Now I got the basket or the box, or whatever you want to call it, all walled up. MG Rod back with you, and today we're back on my oil pan. So let's get going. So I got the oil pan all welded up, and I cleaned up all the welds, and I went ahead and threw it in the blaster to clean it up, because what I've noticed is when you, after you blast the welds, it's a little bit easier to see what you've got, to see if there's any pinholes or um, porosity within the welds. And I went back and touched up a couple spots here and there until I thought I was probably okay. And then I went ahead and filled it up with water. Now you might say, water, won't that make it flash rust? Yes, <laughs> yes it will. But in my case, I'll just throw it right back in the blaster again and clean it up. So it's not a big deal. You can use anything you want to check it with. Just want to use something that's very low viscosity and flows like water. Because you got to remember, hot oil flows like water. So you want a, th a thin, a lightest viscosity stuff that you have. You can use kerosene, whatever you want to use. Um, solvent. I've done that before. But uh, you know, I get it set up and to where it was strapped down to something to where it won't move and then fill it with water and you want to get it all the way to the top because like in here I got welds across here. We want to make sure there's no nothing leaking out of these as well. I found one spot right here that was weeping a little bit which was a spot that I was a little concerned about and yeah it was leaking. So I went back and rewalded that. So now we're good there. So now that we got our windage tray roughed in it's time to start looking at the baffles that are going to go in the bottom of the pan here. So I've made a couple pieces here. Start out with just some cardboard strips and trimmed them up until they fit. So I got one that's going to go in here on this side. And then one that's going to go here on this side. Like I said, I just took cardboard and trimmed it to fit across here and then slid it down to where I wanted it and then made adjustments to it till it fit. Because up here doesn't fit quite the same as it does down here or even down in here. So I got it to fit exactly at the height I wanted at, which is gonna be just above the oil height. Because the oil should be about two and a quarter inches. I got this at, I think about two and seven sixteenths, something like that, if I remember correctly. That will keep the oil from, from sloshing and pushing up the side so much and to keep it down in the center. Now there's more we're going to do other than just these, but we're going to start with this. So now I need to get this in here and get these tacked into place and we can move on from there. So now that I got these tacked in, I want to make this one doesn't interfere with the pickup tube here. And if so, then we'll do some adjustments. It looks like we got plenty of room there. Oh yeah, we're good to go there. Now, I do have it marked out here where my pickup is going to be. And that's important because I'm going to be putting a basket in here with trap doors and everything. Yeah, I probably should have put those in for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do these. All right, so I've made the little box here. Basically, these two, two pieces together will make the box that will end up going around the oil pump. And I ended up doing a bit of a dip here because when the oil pump goes in, it's just close enough there. I want to make sure it clears. 
So I got these slots in here so the oil can go into there. And then I'm making these hinges. Now, the only hinge I was able to actually get without ordering something from a supply house, uh, which I ended up having these here, was these. They have the holes in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these holes on the bottom. But basically this is gonna go over top of this and close off that slot. And then they will open up to allow the oil in and then close off to keep it from going back out. But we, but I take the hinge, I left the pin of the hinge extra long on both sides, bend the one down against the bottom of the hinge and the other one out to where it doesn't quite open to a 90. You don't want to open all the way up. So we, the, the weight of it will allow it to fall back down which it was just falling back down perfectly just a second ago, but you gotta play with it once it's on there, and make sure it's just falls back down all by itself. And we'll make, so I need to make three more of these so we can put four of them all the way around. Then I can put this together as a box and then that'll go in. to the oil pan, something like that. And that'll keep the oil around the pickup. So after a bit of messing around with these things, I realized that these just are a little too, I guess you call stiff. And I need to make them a little more floppy, if you will. So they um, flop around a lot smoother and a lot easier than what they actually are. So that's actually not hard to do. There's a punch in these things right here that holds this pin in and they're down the length of them. And that all you basically have to do whoops, is just knock this pin out. And then what I do is take the side that does not have the punch mark here. And I got a drill bit here that's just big enough, just slightly bigger than that, that I can basically ream this out with. take a little file and just kind of file these edges just a fuzz just so we create a little bit of clearance in that hinge that way it flops around a lot easier and it's a lot easier to adjust these things once we get them attached to the box there and get them to you know drop in nice and easily so then once you've got that done that way you see, we've got just a little bit of movement there now. So there's some clearance. Basically, then we're just gonna take this. We'll just tap it back in there again. And then we got ourselves a much floppier, easier, hinge to adjust. Now the way you need to cut this hinge so that you can do that and all that, all that extra hanging out there is cut the hinge obviously longer than what you need. And then you just come back in and just cut, like I got a mark here and a mark here. Just come in, just cut. So you get to that center and then you just pull this off of here and then flip it over and cut the other side right to the to that opening in the hinge just repeat on the other side then you have enough extra here to do that bend just don't cut into that
All right, so now I got the basket or the box, whatever you want to call it, all walled up. And as you can see, with all the trap doors open, none of them are colliding with each other, which is what we want to see. And they all operate nice and smoothly, which is what we want. And it took a little bit of plying to get everything, you know, tweaking, bending this to make sure they operate smoothly. Now I've got another engine block that's sitting on the engine stand, already bolted to it. So I went ahead and turned it, put the oil pump in it, turned it upright and put the pan on from the bottom with this in place and then got this moved around sitting where I wanted it to where it was centered on the pickup. Made a few marks here. So now that this is all welded up, we can put this in here. It's going to be right about there. And I can put a couple of welds in the corners of all of this, and I could even weld it to these if I want to. Now I'll hold it in place right where I want it, and then we can finish with these baffles. All right, well, I got the basket welded in, got all of the baffles welded in. I went ahead and put a front baffle in and ended up deciding to leave the rear baffle out because, well, let's face it. In an MG, you're not exactly going to be seeing high G-forces accelerating. You'll be seeing a lot more forces in turning and braking than acceleration. And I'd rather give myself the ability to do a good job of cleaning the oil pan out by being able to pull the stuff out this way than to have that lip in there. So I decided to go ahead and go it that way. And then I went ahead and finished, or at least I think I've got it finished, unless I changed my mind, the um, uh, windage tray here. So we got all these holes in it to allow the oil to drain back. And I went ahead and cut this little, sh basically with the profile of the front here, since it doesn't really need to hang out beyond that. I thought it'd be neat to at least try to attempt to show how this stuff, these things move when, with uh, flow. Now this isn't gonna be a great representation because I cannot actually represent the true forces that are acting on them, but we can get a kind of an idea here. So this has water in it up to about the oil level when the engine's full of oil. And we tilt it this way. You can see that this closes and this one's closing as well. But if we tip it up this way, we can kind of see that these two are opening while these two are closing. And conversely, when you tilt forward, you're going to see these two close and these two open. So that keeps, and then these walls help keep it around this area, which is where we were, mo which is most important to keep it around the pickup. So that's my oil pan, unless I decide to make some changes between here and, and when I finish the motor. That's what we're going to have. So until next time, this is MG Rob.